The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your, na your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon to your family. As always, the Lord has a reading, a rich reading from the liturgy, but it commits us. We cannot see the Lord and be the same people. We cannot allow ourselves to be gaze upon Him and continue being the same people. Dear brothers and sisters, in the letter, in the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, it speaks to us about a church, the church in Macedonia. And it's interesting what it tells us and how he wants to question us, like the Christians who lived in that church. In trials and grace, they grew their joy, grew in, in affliction and in the joys, in the trials, because, brothers and sisters, how easy it is to love the Lord when everything's going well, when everything is going well. We don't see anywhere in our lives a problem, an illness, a cross. But how difficult it is when we're passing that process of how to look at heaven and smile, of how we can look at heaven and be grateful. And that's the invitation that St. Paul is doing with that introduction of how he speaks to us about Christians in that church. That church that's mature in the faith, grows in the faith. How many times we go through those terrible moments, those moments of uncertainty and pain, and our gaze has apart from the gaze of Jesus. How beautiful that we can reflect and see how we react in every situation in our lives. We are being consequent with the call the Lord gave us. We are responding to the heights of what He asks of us. Or every day with our, act, with our actions are we failing God. Dear brothers and sisters, St. Paul tells us that his extreme poverty overflowed in a wealth of generosity. How many times we feel poor of charisms, gifts, qualities, and we close in in our own shell. And we don't give the Lord what he's asking of us. How many times we have to do like in, in like me in this Eucharist, this leap of faith because we have to know in whom we have placed all our trust, in the Lord. And there's something we have to be sure is that He's not going to leave us and let us alone. And He's always going to be watching out for us. Dear brothers and sisters, the entire donation, the generous donation of what the Lord is asking of you and me with our lives, a total donation without reserve and without measure. He's not asking less of us. And He's not requiring less of any of the Christians in this moment in which we're living. 
a complete self-giving. That's what the Lord wants of you and me so that we can respond to the heights, to what he needs today and he wants to accomplish. Dear brothers and sisters, as if that wasn't enough, since Paul speaks to us about a collection and they gave more of what was expected. How many times the Lord can look at our lives and and smile because he knows that we're giving more than what was expected. How many times we don't confirm with giving what's asked of us? The minimum effort. How many times we don't prefer that others go ahead of us to say they're already doing it? Me first. Me first and always the example I place and I always place the example of myself. How many times I fail, or I, I fail the Lord every day, always asking for the minimum effort. Dear friends, community life is not easy. But what a greatness we see when we open ourselves to the grace of the Lord, when we allow God to be God in our lives how we can see him in every situation that's presented to us of community life. So each one of you who are who is following us through the different plat platforms, how many excuses do we place to the Lord every day, dear brothers and sisters, that we may be like this, the psalmist in Psalm 146, praise the Lord my soul your life and my life must be a constant praise to the Lord. A constant praise of college, which is the prayer the Lord loves the most, to be grateful. My soul proclaims the, the Lord, how beautiful. I will, I will bless the Lord meanwhile I live it is not a praise when we're happy. It's not a, a praise when everything's going great. It's a praise when the Lord invites us to embrace His cross also at all times. Who are willing to praise the Lord when the beatings keep us down? Who is willing to accompany the Lord and praise Him when they don't let us be one foot here on the earth and our gaze fixed on heaven. In the moments of trial, and persecution, and pain, illness, the Lord wants us faithful. Moments when we're shaken up, as the word of the Lord says. Blessed is he who waits in the Lord. It is difficult, but the prize that we will receive is great. Blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. Because Jesus remains faithful perpetually. The Lord does not vary, does not change, does not move. He is always there, looking upon us, taking care of us, looking over our needs. And when we don't see God, when we don't feel that he is not reporting us. I give them, and this, this is the miracle working in your lives. This is the miracle that you have going on in that your lives. And we, the only thing we have to do is to trust, trust in Him. We have to take that leap of faith that is asked of us because we know that He's not going to, he, that you know that He's going to be loving us. And, and a, a, a blessed Father. Matthew 6, 43, 48. And it's a, a strong drink to assimilate. And the first key in this gospel today is love. The Lord calls us to love. 
to whom, Lord? The one who treats me well, the one who tells me that I speak well, the one who, think, who thinks that I am so beautiful. There's nothing beautiful about me. It, the Lord wants much more than that. He wants to love and He wants us to love those who are, are difficult to love. Who is our stumbling block? The one who criticizes us and doesn't judge, condemning. That brother and sister that makes our her difficult every day. It could be a superior, it could be a bishop. There is where we have to leave God, glorify Himself in our lives. The Lord doesn't send us to the parish. The, the Lord doesn't send us easy things. He wants to glorify Him in the most difficult moments. But there is where we realize who were the true children of the Lord. When to love always. Love always and everyone, beginning with the most difficult. We don't have strength. We don't feel capable. The second word of the word of the, the second part of the word of the Lord is pray. The Lord knows that we don't have the strength to forgive, to allow ourselves to heal our hearts, to be able to love others. Beca but He invites us that we may be men and women of prayer. Men and women that we look with Him and find in Him our strength. Jesus is the majority. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. No one or anyone can separate us from the love of God. Only in Christ who conquered. Dear brothers and sisters, I invite you to love without reserve without measure. Remember that the measure of love is to love without measure. The measure, and when we feel we don't have strength, and praise be to God for them, is that we feel ourselves in need of God. And that's when we have to run closer to Him so that we see the glory of God working in our lives. We are called, like Saint Teresa, Teresa of Calcutta, love until it hurts. Love until it hurts, dear brothers and sisters. Love until it hurts. So embrace the cross of Jesus Christ. Allow Him to fill us with His grace. So that not mine, not my with my ego, with my wound and complex, but rather the grace of the Lord working in, in our lives and forgiving, reconciling. There is where we see the glory of God in my life and in your life. Dear brothers and sisters, as Mother was telling us yesterday, we are called to be signs of the presence of God amongst men in the world today. We have to be a sign, a sign of the kingdom that would show, signals that show that we are truly a couple of the Lord, a sign that you can love Jesus today. It could be different. It, go, it could go against the tide. And we can pray with, for the culture of life. And the third key is be perfect. Be perfect. I invite you to love all without measure and reserve. To pray and encounter in Jesus' strength to reconcile ourselves and love everyone. 
And then when we have that intimacy with God, that intimacy with the spiritual life, He tells you, I want more from you. Put out into the deep. I want more of you. I want you to be perfect. Like your Heavenly Father is perfect. And you're in intimate communion with Him. And His grace is enough. Like St. Paul says, His grace is enough. Dear brothers and sisters, we have to be and we should and correspond to the, that we are called to be transparency. We must be We have to be a, a living oblation to God, a offering in Jesus. We have to learn to die to self every day more, and that it may be Christ who grows in us, that I may diminish, so that I may decrease, so that Christ can grow in me. Wherever we go, a sign of hope sign of the kingdom of a living God. This would be uh, making a, a choice every day more, fighting for Jesus Christ. And this is how the life of prayer and vitamin C, a renewal every day, because yesterday was not valid. A radical choice for Jesus in your life. And that it may not remove from our mind, soul, body, our goal. You who follow. Our goal is to be saints. We are called at this historic moment, so important, to be the saints of the third millennium. That it may be the apostles of the third millennium that we may be console those hearts, those pierced hearts, pierced out of so much infidelity, and that may be a consolation for them. Dear sisters, firm, with our eyes placed on the Lord, always aspiring to holiness and pleasing God, always and in everywhere, all for the heart of Jesus through the heart of Mary.